I've gotten a lot of different questions and comments regarding football boots and things in general over my last few videos. So in this q and I'm going to try and go over as many of those questions as I can. And if you have any football boot related question, feel free to leave it in the comments below. And as always, you can check the links in the description if you're interested in picking up a new pair of boots at a discount. All right, starting off with the first question, I'm gonna try and go through these pretty quickly. So, hey man, I'm looking to pick up a new pair of cleats and Dix has the Copa Gloros and the Tiempo Legend 9 Pros, both down to 70 to $80, which one would you rather get? So for me, the Tiempo Legend 9s would just clear the Copa Gloros. The Legend 9 was the last pair of leather Tiempos. I actually own the Legend 9 Pros. For me, they just fit a little bit better for me compared to the Copa Gloros. And honestly, $70 to $80 is a great deal for those because the full retail was like $130. Next up, hey bro, can you review the Future 7 match? Tell me its weight and compare them to the Tiempo 10 Academy. So I reviewed the previous Puma Future match, the one that came out last year. It's a pretty solid third tier takedown boot and the future seven match isn't really going to be that different from the previous year's model and honestly i can tell you right now it's very likely i'm going to prefer the legend 10 more because i prefer the legend 10 academy over last year's puma future match it just has a little bit more lockdown i just felt that the future match was a little bit too loose around the ankle for me where's the love for the copa pier 2 honestly it is a great football boot just there's so many different leather options on the market, and for me, it just isn't the best. I'd prefer getting something like the Mizuno Morelia, almost anything from the Mizuno line, and I also like the Nike Premier 3 a little bit more. There's just better options in my opinion, and the Copa Pier 2 is pretty expensive. I always get the pro models, they're just too good. Honestly, that's the truth. In terms of Nike boots, the pro models are almost always like just below the quality of the elites and in some cases they're very close to being the same quality for example in the tiempo series the pro version is basically identical to the elite version and if you want to get the pro version of the vapors it's also a really good football boot and you save a hundred dollars compared to the elites Definitely, I think Nike probably makes the best second tier takedowns of any company. Me who, can, me who can only spend $10 on football boots. Honestly, I mean, those Amazon boots that I bought three weeks ago cost me $19. And I mean, they weren't the best thing I ever played with, but they weren't that bad either. They honestly could rival some like $50 to $60 boots. At the end of the day, you can play with whatever you have on your feet. You can play barefoot if you want, just don't get stepped on. All right, this next comment is basically just saying that New Balance have been taking a lot of positive steps since 2019, and they've come a long way since they initially released the Furon series onto the market. Yeah, I would absolutely agree. I think of all of the different brands, New Balance has probably had the biggest come up in recent years. They focused on pretty much just releasing three core models when you think about it. They just have the 442, the Furon, and then the Tequila. That's it. So they're not going too crazy. They're really just focusing on making those individual lines as good as they can. As far as comfort goes, there's nothing that you're going to get that fits, I think, as comfortably in the toe box compared to what New Balance has on offer. Conical studs are a lot easier on your joints. For anyone who's had an injury, I would definitely recommend. Yeah, conical studs are going to be easier on your joints. I agree with this comment. That's why when you look at artificial grass sole plates, they're usually going to have conical studs in place of bladed studs because conical studs um, result in less rotational traction when you're on the pitch. So um, it's a little bit of a trade-off because bladed studs, while they give you a lot more grip between your sole plate and the surface of the pitch, ultimately that is going to translate to a little bit more stress on your joints. So that being your ankle, knees, and your hips as well. So Obviously, there's a little bit of a trade-off. You want to have enough traction on the pitch so that you're not slipping when you're playing, but there is such thing as too much traction. I think that's something that people don't always necessarily think about when they're picking out a pair of football boots or when they're playing, but there definitely are scenarios where you can have too much grip on the field. I tried on 200 pound Adidas X series the other day. I don't know how any pro wears them. They're the worst boots I've ever worn. I've tried a few of the top end boots and they just fit awful. I'm 40 now and I've always loved boots, but they're nowhere near these days. I think a lot of the newer boots that are being made aren't gonna be for everyone, especially the boots that have a razor thin upper, like the X Crazy Fast, the Vapor 15, the Puma Ultra Ultimate. 
those boots aren't going to be for everyone and you also don't have to buy a 200 pound or 250 dollars pair of football boots you can get a great boot that has a more traditional design that you might be looking for for less i mean this right here the mizuno morelia 2 not too hard to find this is the elite version that retails for about 150 to 160 dollars so you can still get great traditional boots you can even go back to the copa mundial from adidas it retails now for around 160 to 170 so if you are still in the market for traditional boots you can still find them i want to buy the furon v7 plus but when i search online it just says furon v7 is it the same so they're not exactly the same the v7 plus is going to have a slightly different design aesthetic to the upper but other than that, the fit, feel, and the overall silhouette of the boot is gonna be very, very similar when you're looking at the V7 compared to the V7 Plus. So as long as you're happy with the design and the colorway you're getting, I wouldn't really care too much about getting the Plus variation or the standard. This might be one of my favorite comments of all time. It just says Joma cleats and nothing else. Um, so Joma seems like a really cool brand. I've ordered their um, turf shoes before and they were really comfortable. I played with them a couple months back. I've never tried a pair of like firm ground cleats before from Joma. I've seen a few on the market. So, I mean, if you guys are interested in me picking up a pair and reviewing them, I can definitely do that. I've been impressed with some other shoes that they've created. So yeah, hopefully in the future, I'll get a chance to review a pair. I have a Tiempo Legend 10 Academy, and I can say they are pretty good. I agree. Which boot is better, more comfortable, the Mercurial or the Adidas Predator Accuracy 0.3? So I'm assuming you're gonna be talking about the Vapor 15 Academy or the Predator Accuracy 0.3, because those are both third tier takedown models. Um, so they're both gonna run you around like 70 to $80. Uh, so it's a pretty good deal either way. And they both fit pretty good but if i were to choose between the two the vapor 15 academy is one of the best third tier takedowns i've tried on and that's the, only an 80 dollars boot so i think it has a slight edge over the accuracy this next comment is about the tequila v4 pro and it says explain the heel area that's important for me so the heel area on uh the tequila v4 and on some other new balance boots i will say the first two sessions where I have these boots on the field, sometimes I can notice just a little bit of irritation in the heel area. I especially noticed that with the 442s and then only a little bit with the Tequilas. But if you persevere just with wearing the boots for the first two to three sessions, after you've worn them for a couple weeks, any pain or issues that I had in the heel area, it did go away. So I think the same should happen for you. Bro, the Predator Leagues are amazing for the price tag, especially the fit. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, especially considering that the Predator League, the third tier variation is going to be about a third the price of the Predator Elite. And I mean, the Predator Elite that has the fold over tongue is about $280 and it's sold out everywhere right now. So it's almost impossible to get. And I think resale is above $300. And you're getting a surprisingly decent boot at the third tier takedown level. The fit's pretty good, and you still get those elements to give you more grip with the ball. So yeah, if you want a Predator, but you have a budget of like $100 or less, the Predator League is a great way to go. So this was a comment on the Amazon boots, and it says, since most boots are so well-made and designed, even rip-off versions are solid because they copied their frame. Honestly, yeah, I wasn't really sure how to feel about that, about the, the $20 boot from Amazon, because the sole plate was just a direct knockoff of a design from a Nike AG sole plate. But at the end of the day, if you're copying something that's good, it's usually gonna be good for the consumer because that AG sole plate on Nike models is a great sole plate for playing on artificial grass. So the fact that um, the Amazon boots were copying that stud configuration, I liked playing in those boots. So that being said, the reason why these boots were so uh, underpriced is just because they're from a non-name brand company. So if you're willing to kind of sacrifice playing for a brand that has a bigger reputation and not getting something like a Nike or Adidas or a Puma, I'd say that this boot still has the same quality that you get from like third tier takedown boots that are around $60. Um, and if you want a really tight budget, or if you just don't have a lot of other boots available to you, maybe Amazon's, I don't know, the only place you can shop from, it's a good option. Another comment on the Amazon cleats, yes, they're good, but play three full games and they're bye-bye. I don't know, man. <laughs> well, I played in them at least twice now, and 
they don't really seem to be poorly constructed. I mean, if you play in any pair of boots for a season or longer, you're gonna notice noticeable damage no matter what. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the durability on $20 cleats isn't that great. Another comment on the video about the Tekela V4s, would you pick these for wet synthetic pitches? I often find my TF Mercurials getting waterlogged, maybe Laceless is less likely to take on water. Um, so in my experience, if you're playing on a wet field, especially if you're playing when it's raining, your boots are going to get wet no matter what. And the biggest problem for me isn't usually the boots themselves, it's usually going to be the socks. Um, because when you're playing on wet grass, uh, or as I mentioned in the rain, your socks are going to get wet. And so the boots are going to be getting soaked basically from the inside and from the outside. Um, that being said, leather boots do tend to get a little bit more waterlogged. So if you're playing in something like these, like the Mizunos, they're literally going to gain a, a pretty significant amount of weight just from the water. So. The Tequilas would be a better option than most just because they have a pretty thin upper, but nevertheless, they're still gonna get wet. Don't buy a takedown model, just buy a top end older model from Outlets or Marshalls. I mean, yeah, I largely agree with this. The only thing I have to say on that is that sometimes it can be hard to find a good old top end model that's in your size and in a colorway you want because once Nike stops making the boots, once Adidas, Puma, New Balance, once they stop producing those boots, the stock is going to drop pretty quickly. And if they don't have the version you want in your size, you're pretty much out of luck. But if you want to go to like a thrift store, if you want to check on eBay, you can always give it a shot. Can the New Balance 442 Pro play on artificial turf? Yes, they can. I played with the 442s on artificial grass for pretty much most of the time that I own them. And they were great. They were extremely comfortable. I will just note that they have a sole play with all conical studs, and when it was dry outside, I felt a lot of traction with the pitch. They were really comfortable. I was never slipping, but on rainy days or when the pitch was just a little bit wet, I did sometimes slip when I was playing with the 442s, but overall, yeah, you can still play with them on artificial grass. The conical studs are actually going to be great for that, and so whether you're on FG or AG, it's a good option. Copa Pure League versus Nike Tiempo Legend 10 Academy versus Copa Gloro, which one is the best? Of those three, the Copa Gloro is going to be the best because, I mean, it is a more premium football boot. Full price, it's worth $20 to $30 more than the other two. If I were to rank these, I'd probably go Copa Gloro, Legend 10 Academy, Copa Pure League with the Legend 10 Academy and the Copa Pure League being very close to each other. But I mean, the Copa Gloro is like an actual leather football boot of decent quality. Uh, Legend 10 Academy is going to be synthetic and the Copa Pure League is going to be a blend of leather and synthetic. Um, but all three are pretty good around the $100 price point. So it just depends. If you're willing to spend the extra $20 for the Copa Gloro, I'd go for it. Can I wear an AG Nike Tiempo Legend 10 or any other AG boot on a field that is turf? What would happen? So I'm assuming when you're referring to turf in this comment, you're talking about that really, really hard substance that's almost like a carpet laid over concrete. It's like what people would play field hockey on. For any surface like that, so a really hard, almost carpeted like surface, you don't really want to be wearing anything that has studs on it. You want to be wearing a turf shoe or even a flat sole shoe. So in other words, AG boots are meant for use on artificial grass. So if you're playing on turf, you should either get a pair of turf shoes or just wear flat soles. Would you recommend the Nike Phantom Luna 2 Academy? So I haven't tried on the Luna 2 Academy. And I mean, the reason why I'm not really drawn to try it on is because by far the biggest selling point of the Phantom series is Gripnet. That's pretty much what the entire model is based on. And on the takedowns for the Phantom, you don't even get Gripnet. You get just a completely different material on the upper. So in my personal opinion, I just feel like it kind of defeats the purpose. It's almost a non-starter for me. I would just rather go with the Vapor 15 Academy because I already like the fit of the Vapor a little bit more than the Phantoms. But if you really like the design aesthetic of um, the Phantom, whether it be the GX2 or the Luna, you can definitely check out the Academies. They're going to be... a pretty affordable boot retailing for around 70 to 80 bucks. This man is cultured, he's American and says football. Yeah, my parents are from the UK, so I've got to represent. I honestly use a little bit of a mix of it though. 
90% of the time it'll be football, but then sometimes if I'm talking to American friends, it'll be soccer. Superfly 9 Academy or Tiempo Academy. Both pretty good boots. Um, I don't think that the high cut collar is gonna be good on the Superfly 9 Academy. And for that reason, I'd probably lean a little bit towards the Tiempo. All right, and for the final comment here, I got, can you recommend me a football boot for under $100? Brand does not matter. So actually, I'm gonna give you a few to choose from and you can just pick whichever one you like the design of the most. So at the $100 price point or below, I would recommend checking out the Nike Premier 3, especially if you can get it on sale the Copa Gloro from Adidas, the Tiempo Legend 10 Academy from Nike, the Vapor 15 Academy from Nike, and the Copa Pure League from Adidas. All of those football boots I just mentioned should retail for roughly 80 to $100. You can find a lot of them often on sale as well. So yeah, those would be some of the best boots you can get for $100 or less. All right, so hopefully this video has been helpful for you. And as I mentioned, if you do have any other questions, just feel free to leave them below this video. Like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.